Gunsmoke. Brought to you by Chesterfield. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed thanks to Accuray. They satisfy the most. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Yonder, Mr. Dillon. It's Jeb Wingate, ain't it? Yeah. I just hope he doesn't want to find some shade and talk for an hour. I want to get back to Dodge. There ain't no shade to find around here. Less than throw that little rise. Hello, Marshal. Chester. Hello, Jeb. How are you, Jeb? Hey, that's fine. You fellas are carrying lariat ropes. Oh, what's up, Jeb? You want somebody hung? <laughs> no, it ain't that to help a poor fellow out the other side of the mound there. He's got an old chewed-up single-tree wagon. Now his traces are busted. Well, can't he tie them together? Oh, they're too short already. I was riding over to my place for some rope, but maybe you can save me the trip. I will help him, Jeb. Is he a friend of yours? No, oh, i never seen him before. Some poor, half-starved pilgrim. I feel kind of sorry for him, though. So you take care of him now. Yeah, we will, Jeb. So long. I'll be seeing you in Dodge one of these days. Bye. Jeb must get awful lonesome living out here all by himself, Mr. Jones. Oh, I guess he likes it, Chester. Mm-hmm. I don't see no man with no wagon. You will in a minute. There he is. Hey, Jeb was sure right. And look at that horse, too. Yeah, they make quite a pair, don't they? Mm-hmm. Hello. Hello. Here, you can use some rope, mister. Here's 30 feet. That ought to do. I sure thank you. Where are you headed? Dodge, I guess. You come far? Montana Territory. Well, oh, my, my, no wonder. I... Another fella, he just left. He was going to help me, too. You live out here? I'm the marshal in Dodge. You're looking for work? If they'll give it to me. I heard the Santa Fe's laying more track there. Well, I know the agent. Maybe I can help you. No, I wouldn't want to get you no trouble. Trouble? I, I'll i come see you. I'll fetch you another rope as soon as I can. Oh, no need for that. My name's Hook, Marshal. Arden Hook. Now, that's just a proud foot, Hook. How you do? Pleased to make your acquaintance. Well, we'll be seeing you. Thank you kindly. He keeps looking around like you think somebody's going to hit him any minute. Well, maybe he's running from something, Chester. Say, I'll bet that's it. You suppose the law is after him? What for? Well, I don't know. Maybe he's a murderer. Of <laughs> what? Flies? Come on. Let's do a little ride. <laughs> Kitty, uh, have you seen Chester? No, I haven't. Allie was supposed to meet me here. 
I guess I might as well wait for him, huh? <laughs> Jesse's been living pretty quiet ever since you two got back to town the other day. Yeah, he's broke, Kitty. Being broke never stopped him. But there's a man who's really broke. Now, who? Arden Hook. What? That fellow Sam hired yesterday, uh, over there. Haven't you seen him yet? I think he's been poor all his life. Well, what's he doing for Sam? Oh, anything. Cleans the place up, mostly. He seems to know you. Yeah, yeah, we ran into him out on the prairie. Oh, hello, Marshal. I see you made it, Hook. Thanks to you. I'll be buying you a new rope soon, Marshal. I got me a job. Ah, no, forget the rope. You'll need your money for food and a bed. Oh, Mr. Noonan, give me that shack out back. I can cook some there, too. Well, that's fine. Yeah, it's hey, going... Sanders. Oh, no. Look. Oh. Well, what do you know? Excuse me, Marshal. What? Where are you going? Wait a minute, you. Yeah, that's him, all right. Who are those men, Kitty? Well, you're Arden Bill Hook, Centers and Ed Hogler. Yes. They drift Don't in you once in a while. Don't you remember Lawrence back in 56? Matt, did I tell you that Mr. Yes, Podkin... Kitty, wait a minute. We remember I, I, I want to hear this. Oh. We ain't very likely to forget, are we, Sanders? No. And neither is any other man who rode with us. Where you been all these years, Hook? Tell us. I've been around. All over. I can't think of a single man who's seen you in Missouri for some 20 years. I didn't mean Missouri. No, I guess you didn't. Ain't a fitting place for the likes of you, is it? We're wasting time talking to him, Hogler. You work in here, Hook? Yeah. Good. We'll have a little talk before we leave town. For old time's sake, huh? You go on about your work now. We'll see you later. Matt, they're going to do something to him. They're just a couple of riders, you say, Kitty? That's all I know about them. Well, maybe I can find out more. How? I think Hook's gone out to his room. <coughs> Excuse me, Kitty. I'll be back in a little while. <laughs> That whistling man, Bobby Haggart, really started something. Tonight, the Calypso Boys join in. Ready, amigos? Packs more pleasure. Packs more pleasure. Chesterfield packs more pleasure. Because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. It stands to reason a cigarette made better and packed better, smokes better, tastes better. And Chesterfield is more perfectly packed by Accuray. This electronic miracle removes human error in cigarette manufacture. So Accuray Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips, mild yet deeply satisfying. Yes, Chesterfield gives you something no other cigarette can give you. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. By Chesterfield, mild, yet they satisfy the most. the names, Hook. Bill Centers, Ed Hogler. You heard them? Yeah, I heard them, but I don't know quite what they were talking about. It's nothing, Marshal. I used to know them, that's all. Uh-huh. In Missouri, huh? Yeah, that's right. They said something about Lawrence back in 56. They were just talking. Lawrence, Kansas, that was the first time it was raided by Missourians under General Atchison, wasn't it? You and Centers and Hogler were with him, huh? All right. I'll tell you. I was there. I raided across the border with him. I helped them sack Lawrence. I... I even killed a man. I killed him in cold blood. Marshal, he was trying to give up, and I shot him anyway. The Centers and Hogler don't hold that against you, do they? Not hardly. Oh, they knew the man. But they didn't care about that, and why are they after you, Hook? The war didn't start at Fort Sumter in 61, Marshal. It started in 56, right here in Kansas at Lawrence. So? 
I'll never know why he killed that man. But I swore I'd never kill another for any cause. So I run away. There are a lot of men who didn't fight, Hook. But I started out fighting. And then I quit. They don't forget that. Not Missouri, they don't. Maybe I am a coward. I don't know. But they're going to kill me, Marshal. You, uh... You're sure of that, huh? I know them. And I know what they're like. All right. Look, I want you to stay here and dodge. And get killed? And now they've found you, they'll follow you. You're safer in Dodge than you'd be any place else. Well, I guess so. You leave it to me. You'll be safe. <laughs> Don't go get him soon, Hogler. Where's he gonna run to? Hogler's right. He isn't running anywhere. What? Oh, Marshal, huh? You're Hogler? You want something, Marshal? Yeah. I want you to leave Arden Hook alone. We ain't gonna bother Hook, Marshal. Not if you're smart. Little coward like that, I wouldn't feel right even touching him. What happened happened a long time ago. Why keep it alive? Was you in the war, Marshal? Yeah. Yeah, I was in the war. But it's all over, and the sooner everybody forgets about it, the better. We might have won if it wasn't for cowards like Arden Hook. All right, there's no use arguing with you. But Hook's going to stay here. And if anything happens to him, anything at all, I got enough evidence on you two to hang you. Too bad you found out about all this, Marshal. Yeah, I guess there's nothing we can do now, Sanders. You mean we're going to let that little card go? Yeah, we'll let him go. Who cares about him anyway? Bye, Marshal. today, Matt. Well, that's the sun, Doc. You see, it's the sun that makes it hot. Oh, that's uh, the sun. I was only making a comment. I wasn't asking for a scientific explanation. Oh, excuse me, Doc. I didn't understand what you wanted. Yeah, I see. Well, now that you've started it, I can tell you what the heat does to some people. Oh, good. You you tell me about that, will you, Doc? Yeah. Uh, uh, with... uh, oh, hold on. Uh, hello, Chester. Uh, has either one of you saw Arden Hook today? No, I haven't seen him for the past few days. Why, Chester? Well, they say Jeb Wingate's looking for him. It might mean a job work, Mr. Dillon. Oh, I doubt it. Jeb's always said he'd never have anybody working for him. Well, if it ain't for a job, why would he be looking for him? Well, I figure that's Jeb's business, don't you? Yes, but... but here's Miss Kitty. Maybe she knows where he's at. Oh, I don't know why you're so concerned, Chester. <laughs> well, sir, I still think it means a job for him. Oh, this is a busy-looking outfit. Yeah, uh, oh, uh, uh, Miss Kitty, hmm? have you saw Arden Hook anywhere? Is it really important? Uh, no, Chester. Not since he left this noon. Left? For where? Well, Jeb Wingate finally found him and they left. Where'd they go, Kitty? Jeb gave him a job, Matt. He hired him on. There. See? What did I tell you, Mr. Day? See there, Doc? Didn't I tell you? What, what you did were I tell right, you? Chester, yeah. Well, I wish him luck, but I can't see Arden Hook working on a ranch somehow. He's about the last man I'd pick up. Matt, I've got an idea. Yeah, what, Doc? Well, I just remembered something. Well, tell us. It's nothing you don't already know if you just have thought of it. Yeah, but I didn't think of it, Doc. You ever hear of Lou Wingate? Uh, yeah, Jeb's talked about him a time or two. He talks about him a lot. Now, wait a minute, Doc. Lou Wingate was killed in the first raid on Lawrence in 56, That's wasn't That's right. Shot down when he was trying to give up. The way Jeb always tells it. Sutters and Hogler. They went to Jeb and told him who killed his brother. So he hired Arden Hook. Hired him so as he can have him out there alone. Where there'll be no witnesses. Chester, go get our horses. It's going to be dark before we get there now. <laughs>
Say, where are you listening to Gunsmoke? In your car? Getting ready for dinner? Oh, I see. Just relaxing in your favorite easy chair. Well, I'd say you're in a good spot right now to really enjoy a Chesterfield. You see, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. It stands to reason. A cigarette made better and packed better smokes better, tastes better. And Chesterfield is more perfectly packed by Accuray. This electronic miracle removes human error in cigarette manufacture. So Accuray Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips, mild, yet deeply satisfied. Yes, Chesterfield gives you something no other cigarette can give you. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. By Chesterfield, mild. Yet they satisfy the most. still don't know why we left our horses way back yonder. Well, let's get behind that wagon at the side of the barn and I'll tell you. Hey, look. There's Jeb Wingate sitting with his back to the window. Yeah. Here. This ought to do it. Now, the reason we Mr. left... Mr. Dillon, the... somebody's coming. You think they followed us? I don't know, but they weren't far behind us. Now, don't let them see you now. No, sir, I won't. Hey, look at that, Sanders. Sit and duck. We can put a rifle bullet through him from here. It's Hogler and Sanders. Be I don't quiet. understand this, Hogler. Why not? Well, Jeb Wingate said he was going to kill Hook and make it look like an accident, didn't he? Yeah. Then why not let him do it? Because I want Hook killed another way. I want that smart Marshal Dillon to hang him. And I'm going to make him do it. How? Oh. Kill Wingate and everybody will think Hook done it. He's the only man who'd have a reason, ain't he? Yeah, yeah. All we got to say is he killed Wingate because he is afraid of him. Still murder. <laughs> You're smart, Hoogler. I like the idea of Marshal Dillon having to hang him. Go ahead, shoot. I'm going to move out there, Chester. You stay here. Right in the back. I got the drop on you, Hogler. It's Arden Hook. He's got a rifle. Put that rifle down. Where'd you come from, Hook? I heard your horses coming in. I heard most of what you were telling sinners. He's going to shoot us, Hogler. I wouldn't shoot nobody. You ought to know that. And what's the rifle for? I'll shoot in the air to warn Wingate. I'll kill you, you do that. Maybe. But you won't kill Wingate. There's two of us, Hook, and I can... All right, that's enough, Hooker. Mr. Marshal, get him. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. Then drop your gun, Sutters. Sure, sure. Chester. Yes, sir. Go get Wingate. Yes, sir, I'll get him. You killed Hogler, Marshal? Yeah, I killed him. I want our centers isn't dead, too. I wasn't going to do nothing. I didn't want anybody to die. They'd have killed you and Wingate both if I hadn't stopped him. I was about to warn him. I was all ready to shoot. It's too late. I wasn't going to shoot Wingate Marshal, honest. The court can decide that, centers. Marshal? Hello, Jeb. Chester started telling me what this is all about. I never heard of nothing like it. Yeah. Well, Arden Hook was ready to give his life for you, Jeb. I know. And I ain't very proud of myself, Marshal. You got no cause to be. You know, I'd throw you in jail, but you haven't done anything yet. I... I want to do something. 
Now what? Hook, I didn't bring you out here for a job. I know. But, well, I'm offering you one now, if you'll stay. I ain't sure I'm strong enough for this kind of work. I don't know how to tell him, Marshal. Why don't you tell him that you've got that kind of strength? Tell him it takes a different kind of strength to be a brave man. Thank you, Marshal. Will you stay, Hook? Yeah, yeah, I'll stay. Our star, William Conrad. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. A cigarette made better and packed better smokes better, tastes better. And Chesterfield is more perfectly packed by Accuray. This electronic power is. Well, I don't know, but they weren't far behind us. I don't let them see you now. Oh, sure. Chesterfield, mild, yet they satisfy. The most. You know, the frontier was buffalo hunters, trail drivers, and cowboys on the prod. But never a place for families. Yet next week, a father comes to Dodge looking for his daughter. A daughter whose name is Kitty Russell. And that was the West. Good night. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Vic Perrin, Harry Bartell, James Nusser, and Paul Dubois. Parley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Live modern. Smoke L&M. Live modern. Change to L&M. Only with L&M can you enjoy the full, exciting flavor of today's finest tobaccos through the modern miracle of the pure white miracle tip. So light up. Free up. Let your taste come alive. Live modern. Smoke L&M. Live modern. Change to L&M. Join us again.